heir of that painting is a young, charming millionaire. And you will get to know him. You need to earn his trust completely, so he lets you into his life and his home. Then, when the time is right, you will steal the painting from a high security vault inside his house and bring it back to me. Do y'all remember Eric? You know, the guy Meredith and I were fighting over the night Mom went into a coma. The guy who was so hot he made boiling water look cool. The guy whose smile shone brighter than the sun and whose eyes were deeper than the Amazon rainforest. The guy who... He looks familiar. Oh my god, I've kissed this guy once! Yeah, the guy who stole my heart the minute I saw him. And then Meredith kissed him! Do you gals know him? Not super well, but I'd rate him number eight on my list of good kissers. And I've kissed tons of people, so that's pretty high. Oh, Pierre, you really gotta see his brothers. They look like ugly old girls, I know. I know everything about him, but how well does he know you? He and his family lived in our neighborhood only for a month. And that was years ago. I don't think he'd recognize me now. Yeah, she's not that memorable. Yeah, we all still going in disguise. We have to convince him that you're just a stranger who has randomly bumped into him with no agenda. Also, he must believe you're very rich, so he doesn't think you're a gold digger. From Pierre, we learned that Eric's mom had passed away at his birth, and his dad had remarried a woman years later who already had children of her own, the quadruplets. The world makes sense again. Thank you. Eric's maternal grandmother recently left the painting to him in her will. His father is a big business tycoon, so they always have security at the mansion. But the painting is even harder to access. The only way you'll make it in and out of there is if you're welcomed into their home. I couldn't believe that of all the millionaires in the world, I had to pretend to like Eric, make him fall for me, and then rob him blind. And how was he even better looking now? Over the next few days, I took on the identity of Christina Delafour, a wealthy socialite with a law degree who lived in a beautiful apartment in a posh area and wore only designer braids. Huh? Wow, this given cheat code is stunning. It's, it's Zivonshi, you moron. Okay, jeez. Also, Pierre, can't someone do a background check on me and easily find out that I did not graduate from Harvard and that I don't have parents who made a fortune out of selling toilets in India and now live there? If anyone runs a check, they'll find all this information to be accurate. I've made sure of it, and no one is interested in the law or toilets. So they won't ask you many questions. Now, show me how to walk in heels like a rich lady. Fine. Meredith, Pass me the Jackie Chim Chews. Oh my god, they'll know you're fake in a second. I was joking, relax. I've hung out with enough rich people to pick up a few things. I got this. And then a week later, I was inserted into Eric's life. We talked over coffee for an hour and I thought it was going really well. But when it was time to part ways, he didn't ask for my number and just left. Ugh, I'd failed to capture his interest. I'd have to plan another encounter without seeming suspicious. As I was walking away distracted, I ran straight into a garbage can and stubbed my toe hard. Son of a biscuit! Holy mother of fudge! I was still hopping around when I crashed into a woman pushing a stroller and a doll went flying out of her hand onto the road. Just then, the car ran over the doll and turned it into a pancake. You! You destroyed my child's precious doll! I'm so sorry. It was an accident. I'll get your little girl a... Wait, your child is a cat? Yes. <coughs> And that was my childhood doll, which I passed on to my baby. Look, here's some money. Get your baby another doll. She loves that one, and they don't make those anymore. Your baby is a cat. She doesn't love that particular doll. She probably doesn't even love you. She'd eat your face in your sleep if you weren't the one to feed her. Now, please. Just then, someone tugged hard at my purse, and I saw a thief running away with it. You've got to be kidding me. I took my heels off and sprinted after the thief. He jumped over a fence into a park and I followed. I was gaining on him and sent a flying heel at his head. Just then, someone ran past me, pounced at the thief, and pinned him to the ground. Gotcha. Eric? The park security immediately arrived on the spot and took the thief away. Aren't you glad I followed you and came to your rescue? My rescue? I hit him with my shoe to slow him down and was about to catch him, but then you swooped in at the last minute and now you want credit? Whoa, easy. I was just flirting with you. Oh, sorry. Wait, you said you followed me? Yeah, I felt stupid that I left without asking for your number. I definitely want it now. You became even more interesting when you stubbed your toe, murdered a doll, yelled at the cat lady, and chased a robber. 
Eric and I started seeing each other, and even though I knew it wasn't a real relationship, it still felt wonderful. We both hated rom-coms, but were always up for watching horror movies. We supported different baseball teams and had heated debates about who sucked more, and we both loved eating from street vendors and walking around the city at night. I enjoyed his company more than I cared to admit, and my heart skipped a beat every time he took my hand or gave me a goodnight peck on the cheek. And then one night, as we watched a fireworks show in the park, he pulled me close and kissed me, and I practically melted in his arms. Soon enough, he told me his parents were hosting a party at their house, and he wanted to introduce me to them. This was the first time I'd be in his mansion, and I needed to make sure I got invited often enough to find out where the vault was. Eric's dad was lovely, but his stepmom looked at me with a stare so icy it could make hell freeze over. I escaped from the party for a while when the dancing started. Yeah, that's when Meredith dropped by as Catwoman with a cheeseburger. But soon enough, Eric came around to call me in for dinner, where the quadruplets also joined us. So, Eric told us your parents sell toilets in India. Uh, yeah. It's a great business because everyone needs a toilet, right? And you know the population of India. Multiply that with toilets and you have a fortune. What is the population of India? Well, I don't have an exact figure. It's just a lot of people. Suddenly, I had a queasy feeling in my stomach. Didn't you get made fun of as a kid? If you were in my school, you'd be called the Toilet Princess. <laughs> Grammar Queen! Duchess of Pooh! Guys, cut it out. You're not in high school anymore. Wait a second. Have we ever met before? Uh, what? No, I really don't think so. Oh god, why was my stomach churning? You know I'm really good with faces, and you remind me a lot of this girl we met in a neighborhood in Connecticut years ago. Guys, remember? She had a twin sister. Oh yeah! I remember those twins vaguely. The blonde one was prettier, right? Dang it! Has to be someone else. I'm an only child, and I've always lived in Boston until I moved here. Yeah, Eric told us you're a lawyer from Harvard. So who's the baddest person you put behind bars? Um, not that kind of lawyer. I'm actually an environmental lawyer. I was really feeling sick now. Maybe it was that burger I ate? Like you have trees as clients? What do they pay you with? Leaves? <laughs> <laughs> hey, why are you turning green? You love trees so much that you're becoming one? <laughs> Can you guys stop? You're not even that funny. No, look at her. She's green. I think I'm gonna hurl. Eric called the doctor immediately, who said I had food poisoning. He gave me some medicines, and Eric insisted I stay over for the night in one of their guest rooms. I fell asleep immediately and woke up a few hours later feeling thirsty. As I made my way down to the kitchen, I realized I had the perfect opportunity to try finding the vault. Just then, I heard some low voices from some room, and I slowly crept up to find Eric's stepmom talking to one of the bodyguards in the library. Were you able to figure out how to unlock the vault? There's no way. I've tried everything for weeks. I'll have to use a tiny explosive device to destroy the lock. The vault is all the way up in the attic. No one will hear a thing. But we have to steal a painting the day after tomorrow while your husband and Eric are away on business. Are you ready for this? And then he pulled Eric's stepmom into his arms. I can't wait to run away with you, James. I'm so tired of seeing you secretly. And I am completely ready. As the two locked lips, I turned around and tiptoed away as fast as I could. Okay, so the vault was in the attic, the lock could only be destroyed with an explosive device, and I couldn't let Eric's cheating stepmom and traitorous bodyguard run away with it. The next morning, when Eric came to check on me, I decided to tell him the truth for once. Eric, I have something really difficult to tell you. I got up last night to get some water, and I heard your stepmom and this bodyguard James talking. They were talking late at night? Yeah. Do you have some vault in this house with some painting inside? How do you know that? That's what they were talking about, breaking in and stealing the painting. They're planning to do it the day after tomorrow, and your stepmom said something about running away with James. I saw them kiss. I'm so sorry. I wish I hadn't. No, I'm glad you did. This is gonna be a huge blow for Dad. But it would have been much worse if we'd found out everything afterwards. Thank you for telling me. And please, keep all this to yourself. I know I can trust you. Eric kissed me gently before walking away, and two days later, when the bodyguard and Eric's stepmom were about to escape with the painting, police officers immediately arrested them. This is fantastic! They might link the museum robbery to the bodyguard and stepmom too, and assume the painting is now safe, so it'll be easier for you to steal. Good job, Monchery! I knew you were the smart twin!
After Pierre left, I sank into my armchair, but then I noticed Meredith staring at me. What? You should be happy, but you don't look happy. What's up? Nothing. I just can't wait for this job to be over. You can steal the painting soon, right? You know exactly what to do, and Eric trusts you. By the way, have you two kissed? I've been dating him for two months. Of course we've kissed. We text every day and you never mentioned it. I didn't know I had to. So, how is it? It's fine. It's whatever. It's like kissing anyone. My memory's a bit fuzzy, but you know I've kissed him. You never let me forget. And I definitely wouldn't call it a whatever kind of kiss. Yeah, okay. It's nice. It's good. Nice? Good? Oh, wow. Don't make me jealous with all the passion. Okay, you want to know what kissing Eric is like? It's like flying through space like a meteor that explodes into a thousand stars and then jumping into really cold water that makes you feel alive all over and then feeling warm and tingly down to your toes like having hot chocolate next to a fireplace on a snowy winter night. So, I'm guessing it's better than kissing the pillow you used to practice on? I did not! Shut up! You're in love with him, aren't you? I was about to snap at her again, but then I just sighed. Yes, I am. The night of the heist arrived, and I felt sick to my stomach, but I just wanted to get it over with. Eric's dad was away, and Eric was holding an important shareholder's dinner, with which most of the household staff was busy. I'd volunteered to host the dinner with them, and got ready to leave before their meeting started. Thanks for your help tonight. You're the best. Oh, it was nothing. Don't thank me. So, I'll see you tomorrow at our coffee shop? It's a date. As Eric walked away, my heart felt like it was breaking into a million pieces. This was the last time I'd ever see him again. I gulped down my tears, and instead of leaving, I sneaked up unnoticed to the attic. Inside, I found a heavy metal door to a vault. I took out the tiny explosive device Pierre had given me, placed it on the lock, and activated it. In a few seconds, there was a tiny pop and a sizzling sound. Then, I heard the lock click open. I walked into a tiny, dark vault and found the painting under a glass case, praying to to every god that no alarms would go off, I lifted the case carefully, put the painting in my bag, and started sprinting down the stairs. But just as I'd reached the second floor landing, one of the ninja turtles blocked my way! What are you doing? Hey, bro! Uh, you know when I stayed over a few weeks ago? I dropped a necklace, and I was looking for that guest room, and I got lost. But it's fine. I'll just get new earrings. See you later! He suddenly grabbed my bag and pulled out the painting. Do you think I'm a moron? A moron? You? No way! Sorry, which one are you? Michelangelo. Okay, no one has time for that. Now listen, Mike. You're definitely the smartest of your brothers, and just a tiny bit better looking than all of them, too. We're identical! <gasps> That's what they want you to believe, but I know you're better. I think you and I can strike a deal, okay? I'll sell this painting, and you and I can go have these on it. Just give me an account number, and I'll wire the money to you. No, you're not leaving with it. Okay, look, dude. I'm doing this for your mom. I have to sell this painting so I can pay for her bail and get her a really good lawyer. Don't you want that? No, my mom's in jail because she did something wrong, and she abandoned us all. She shouldn't have stolen Eric's painting. What do you care about Eric? Don't you hate Eric? He's so good looking and smart and perfect and gets all the ladies and makes you guys look even worse than you really are. You should want to hurt him. So let me take the painting. That'll really hurt him. Eric's the best brother in the world and I love him. Ugh. Okay, okay. I have an offer you can't refuse. How about I become your girlfriend? I bet you've never had one. I'm gay. Jesus. All right, I surrender. Just one last thing. Without warning, I punched his face so hard that he went reeling back with shock and dropped the painting. Then I kicked him into a room and locked the door shut. I'm sorry, Mikey. You're a really good guy. I sprinted down another flight of stairs and jumped out of the first story window. I ran across the garden to the fountain, climbed the tree next to it, jumped onto the wall, and then landed softly outside on all fours. Just as I got up, I found myself facing Eric. 